Hello, I'm Eric with Avigo County Public Library and welcome to the West Branch Kitchen for another episode of Flavor Bites. Today we're going to make a traditional French crepe. The ingredients are very basic, flour, eggs, and milk. And those come together to produce a thin, delicate, pancake style crepe that you can put savory or sweet fillings in and can have for brunch, dinner, or any special occasion meal. This recipe is simple, quick, and delicious. Let's get started. First, we'll need to mix up our crepe batter. Now this is a standard traditional crepe recipe. We have about 130 grams or one cup of flour, two large eggs already beaten, and 10 ounces of milk. Since we're gonna be making both savory and sweet crepes, we want these to be neutral, so we're not adding anything else, but you could add salt or sugar to go with whatever filling you were gonna put into your crepe if you were just doing sweet or savory. So first, we'll wanna combine all the ingredients in the bowl. You'll wanna add your milk and your eggs to your flour. and whisk until no lumps remain. You could also use a blender to mix the batter. That will ensure that all of the lumps are out and the batter is as smooth as possible. Once your batter is completely smooth and no lumps remain, you'll wanna put this in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes while you prepare your filling. You want your filling ready to go because once the crepes are cooked, you wanna put everything together and eat while they're still warm. Now that your batter has rested for at least 30 minutes and you've prepared all your filling, it's time to make the crepes. For this, you will need a few items. We have our batter. We have a stick of butter that has the wrapper on it that we will use to coat the pan in between each crepe. I'm using a one third cup measuring cup. For me, this gives me the right amount of batter for the crepe size I like. After you make a few, you can adjust the amount of batter uh, to suit your own tastes. Something that's nice to have is a crepe spreader. This lets you spread the batter nice and thin in the pan. You don't have to have it. You can pick up the pan and twirl, um, but it is nice to have, especially with a heavy pan like this one. And it's also nice to have a crepe spatula. This is nice and thin, gets underneath the crepe, lets you flip it, take it off the pan. You don't have to use this. You can use a regular spatula if that's what you have. As far as cookware goes, crepe pans tend to have very shallow sides that allow you to spread the batter nice and thin and allows you to get underneath with a spatula. You can use any type of pan, preferably nonstick. If you don't use nonstick, make sure you use extra butter so that your crepes don't stick to the bottom of the pan. Today we are using a heavy cast iron skillet, which is nonstick, but also retains heat really well and so it gives us a nice well-cooked crepe. You want to preheat your pan so that it's nice and hot. This has been preheating on medium-high for a few minutes and right now it's on about medium. When you use your butter to coat the bottom, you'll want it to bubble and sizzle but not immediately brown or burn. I'm going to take my stick of butter and just run it around the bottom of the pan and then I will take my measuring cup, scoop out batter. This is a little bit less than a third of a cup, but that's okay. And we're going to pour it right in the center. And then with very light pressure, we're going to take our spreader, move it around in a circle to spread out that batter as thin as we can get it. If you press hard, it can tear the crepe as it's cooking. These are thin and delicate. And once you get it spread out as much as you can, the crepe will start to set, and you can start to see the edges bubble a little bit, and they'll start to turn brown. So that's what we're gonna wait for to cook, is the edges to brown, they may start curling up a little bit, and that's when we know that we've got a nice browned bottom side, and we'll flip our crepe over and cook it on the other side. So once you see that the um, edges are bubbling, everything's kind of set, they might be turning brown a little bit, you'll use your crepe spatula to get underneath the crepe, and you might need to use your fingers a little bit, but be careful not to burn yourself. 
and then you can pick up your crepe, lay one end down and flip it over, and cook the other side. We have a nice browning on this side of the crepe. We want the same thing on the other side. It won't take nearly as long because everything's already set. And when we get finished, we will remove it and we'll set it here on the board while we cook our next crepe. So this is finished. I'm going to put it down and flip it over just like I did in the pan. And we can see that we have a nice brown bubbling on the other side. So that crepe is ready to go. It's cooling. We want to cook our next crepes. Make sure we keep these fairly warm and then we'll fill them with our filling. Once your crepes are finished cooking, you can assemble with the fillings that you've prepared. For the savory crepe, I sauteed some sliced mushrooms in butter. Once the mushrooms were almost done, I added some roughly chopped spinach and cooked those together until the spinach was wilted and tender. I then placed slices of Swiss cheese on a crepe, added the filling, and rolled the crepe up. For the sweet crepe, I sliced a few strawberries, leaving some whole to put on top. I then whipped some cream in a mixer, adding a tablespoon of sugar and a little vanilla extract on a crepe. I then spread some Nutella I warmed up in the microwave for about 45 seconds so that it would be spreadable. Added some of the sliced strawberries and folded the crepe into a cone shape. I put some whipped cream on top, added the whole strawberries, and drizzled the whole thing with some of the warm Nutella. And that's all there is to making crepes. You can put any filling you want inside, whether it's savory or sweet. Crepes are delicious and fun to make. I hope you enjoy your homemade crepes and thank you for joining us on Flavor Bites. We'll see you next time.